Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, I'm not ready to give up my freedom yet. That was actually a quote from a woman that we're going to get into in this email. I've got an email here from a guy who, I guess he emailed me a few months ago. He had a girl that had stuck him in friend zone. And he doesn't really go much into detail, but it's obvious that they're hanging out together. And sometimes they hang out, they cuddle, they kiss, they make out. But part of the problem is he's waiting on her to make the first move. In other words, at key moments, he's not leading, in, in, in essence, leading the interaction to where he wants it to go, which is obviously seducing her and having sex with her. And he gets close, but he only takes it to a certain point because he's waiting for her to lead. And what's really cool in this email is the things that she says to him confirm exactly the stuff that I teach all the time. Even some of the things that she's saying and some of the stuff that I say, women will say and, and women will do. And so, what's, like I said, it's like, so basically what happens in this situation, the guy gets stuck in friend zone and then what I teach to do is just say, hey, well, I'm not interested in being friends only, but if you change your mind, shoot me a text, give me a call. I'd love to hang out. I'd love to see you. And then you walk away. And then when you hear, maybe it's a week later, maybe it's two or three days later, maybe it's two months later, the girl gets in touch with you, <clears throat> you should assume that the reason that she got in touch with you is because she wants to see you. And therefore, your job should be to facilitate a fun-filled romantic opportunity for sex to happen. In other words, create a date, hang out, have fun, and hook up while you're on the date. And I learned this, this lesson the hard way a few times with some women when I was, I get them right in bed and it was interesting. I get them completely naked, but it's like unless I was the one that took off my underwear and so in essence she could basically say it was the sex was my fault or I was the one leading it. Because I, I had that happen a couple of times where we get right down to it and I want the girl to take my underwear off and she just won't do it. It's not that I'm asking her to do it. It's just that, like, she'll take my shirt off, my pants, but it's like the underwear, it's like, that's like the final frontier. Because if she takes the underwear off when she's already naked, well, then I guess in a way she can say, well, I guess it was my fault we had sex because I'm the one that made him completely naked. Whereas if I'm the one that takes my, the last piece, the piece of clothing off, then it's my fault for the sex happening. And you think that's just a stupid thing and it doesn't mean nothing, but it makes a huge difference and you're going to see it when we go through this email. But before we get into the email, I got a quote <clears throat> from Walt Disney. And he says, when you believe in a thing, believe in it all the way, implicitly and unquestionably. Again, you got to be the leader. Women want you to be more of a man than they are. And so in this particular case, this girl has probably reached out to him, I would assume. He created an opportunity to hang out, have fun, and hook up. The problem is he's just not taking it the rest of the way and it's like he's pausing and then she's kind of like hey why aren't you doing anything and he says in essence well you rejected me before and so i don't want to get rejected and so it's up to you and she's basically throws it right back in his lap and says well you've got to be the leader in essence you've got to take it to that place if you want to get out of friend zone you're going to have to do it pal and so she said he says hello again i wrote you a few months back and now i have a new set of questions so in between now and the time I emailed you, there has been numerous nights that myself and this girl that I wrote you about previously have been drinking, and we always pass out together cuddling and whatnot. And last week, we actually made out for the first time along with a glimpse at third base, but not quite getting there. Two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. At the end of the day... You're the man. You're the one with the penis. It, the whole purpose of seduction is to get closer and closer and closer to a woman until you ultimately end up inside of her and you break down her barriers for, by making her feel safe and comfortable and she'll allow you to slowly penetrate her. But if you try to rush too fast and she puts on the brakes, she wants to know that you'll be cool and you'll hang back for a few minutes before you take another run at her. In essence, it's like you keep trying to see, you want to get a little further and a little further each time, and I've explained this a number of times in videos, whereas it's, you start making out, making out leads to heavy petting, heavy petting leads to your hand going to the back of her shirt, undoing her bra strap with your two fingers, and then a, a minute or so later as you're continuing to cuddle and you move your hands around, 
Maybe eventually your thumb grazes her nipple by going up underneath her now loose bra. And then eventually you can just move the bra out of the way and then maybe you take the shirt off and take the bra out of the way. And sometimes you might get, get the shirt and the bra off and after a couple of minutes, like maybe you start to undo the pants or unbutton her pants. She'll be like, whoa, she'll put her bra back on, put her shirt back on. And you can't get discouraged by that. And where a lot of guys go wrong in that situation, they start going, what's wrong? What's the matter? <laughs> is everything cool? Is there everything okay? Uh, did I do something wrong? And they start acting like that. And it just creates an awkward moment. The girl realizes this guy doesn't know what he's fucking doing. He obviously hasn't been very successful when he's been with other women. And all that's going to do is cause her to feel even more uncomfortable and back away even more. Whereas if she backs up and she puts her shirt back on, you just kind of sit back in your chair and you kind of go, kind of like James Bond does, because he knows it's, it's like token resistance. It'll only be a few minutes or an hour or two before you're eventually having sex. And think from the end. And so just look at it as just not the end of the seduction, but just a delay in the seduction. It's just part of the process of making sure that she feels comfortable. Because deep down, women want to know that if you start moving things too fast, that they can put on the brakes and that you'll respect it. Because the deep fear that all women are going to have is that because more like most women, I would say, at some point or another, have been in a situation with a guy where that guy has tried to force things a little too far, a little too fast, and their deepest worry, obviously, is that they'll end up getting date raped by a guy who's not willing to slow down. And so if you can just show you're willing to hang out and chill for a minute or two or a couple of minutes and talk, and even if she puts her clothes back on and you're sitting there and you're talking... After a few minutes, you say, bring those beautiful lips over again. You start kissing, you start making out, leads to heavy petting, and it goes through the same process. And so it's just you slowly wear her out or break down her barriers because what she's going to realize is all through the process, you're going to move at whatever speed. It's kind of like swim, It's like going the path of least resistance. Instead of trying to swim upstream, you're just going to kind of go with the flow because deep down, you know, eventually she's going to... Th- it's like once she gets turned on enough and she feels safe and comfortable enough, then she's going to let you have your way with her. So he says, and last week we actually made out for the first time along with a glimpse at third base, but not quite getting there. Well, I'd say not quite getting there was definitely your fault. He says, I asked her the next day if, was that just drunk making out or was it something more? Well, let me ask you this. What you should have done is ask yourself this question before you said that. You should have said to yourself, is this going to make me look more confident and like I know what I'm doing or make me look more unsure of myself and weak and feminine? I mean, it's pretty obvious. That's not the statement of a guy who's used to getting what he wants. That's a guy who's, what's going on? Why, why didn't it happen? It's like, And that's the question that comes from a guy who's not used to being the leader. She wants you to be more of a man than she is. And then so her response to that was, which is typical, what's a woman normally going to do? Be vague? Gee, I don't... So what is her response? I don't know. I am nowhere near ready to give up my freedom to a boy, nor am I ready for a boyfriend. But I obviously have a thing for you. If you can't see that, then you're blind. And then later on, she says, just quit cr- trying to force shit. Whatever happens, happens. Go with the flow is what she's trying to tell you. And so what's happening is, in your mind, at, at different points, the, the green light goes on. You're like, all right, I'm going to get some. And then you start moving forward, and then she puts up a roadblock, and then you're kind of like throwing your hands up, and you're like, what the fuck? And she can tell, obviously, you're getting frustrated and irritated, and if you had infinite patience and you were used to getting what you want, you would just know, well, maybe this is just a delay of a few minutes. It's just one more hoop that I've got to jump through before we finally merge. So he says, one morning we woke up and she asked me, see, why can you only cuddle with me and be like this when we have been drinking? So in other words, what's going on is you don't have any inhibitions and s- But when you're totally sober, it's like you want to make a move, but you're unsure of yourself, so you don't. And she can tell that. And so he replied with, and this is a terrible response. He says, you're the one that put me in friend zone. I'm not going to be the one to make the first move. Who's the man here? 
it's like you're basically you're saying, okay, well, you know, since you reject me in the past, here's my balls. I'm gonna put them in a box, and so whenever you want to do something with them, let me know. It it's not gonna happen, dude. It's like you have to be the man. I'm sorry, but this is part of being the leader. He says, because from my perspective, she obviously knows where my position stands, so if she makes a move, it wouldn't be weird. Well, yeah, it kind of would, because then you would be, she'd be the man in the relationship, and at the end of the day, you're the one with the penis. Come on, dude. So he says, but what if I make a move sober, and she decides she doesn't want that, and then it became really awkward, and she replied to what I said. <clears throat> And so this is basically, she's just going to throw it right back in your lap and say, dude, I'm expecting you to be a leader. So listen to what she says. She says, well, if you're ever going to leave the friend zone, you're going to have to. In other words, you're going to have to be the one that makes that happen. Women are physically set up to receive men. Feminine energy is about opening up to receive love. It's about bonding. It's about connecting with one another emotionally and relationally. Masculine energy is about purpose, drive, mission, succeeding, accomplishing. And even if you get rejected, so what? You don't take it as a permanent rejection. I think that's part of your problem here is that she throws up a little resistance and then you just give your hands up and you're like, okay, well, I guess that's as far as I'm going to get today. And that's not what should happen. Like I said, two steps forward, one step back. And the problem is that you're not willing to take one step back because I'd say you're probably getting a little butt hurt. It's not, the seduction process is not where she just like says, okay, you can have your way with me. I mean, it happens sometimes, but it only happens when a girl's really comfortable and she feels like you definitely know what you're doing and you're used to being the leader and you've been in this situation before. But when you are unsure of yourself, then she becomes fearful of an awkward moment arising because usually when guys act like that, something awkward usually happens. But when she's with a guy that knows what he's doing, that's why she'll just allow him to just slowly have his way with her. So he says, I just feel like I'm putting in an obnoxious amount of time with this girl and I'm fighting way harder than I should have to. But at the same time, I have the recurring thought that, well, she just needs more time. It's only been six months since she broke with her boyfriend of seven years. And when she's ready, I'll be here. And lately, girls at work and her friends have been asking me, so are you two dating yet or what? And like the tone that we pretty much are like a couple with, with some key elements missing. So I I wrote about this also. Like one of, one of my girlfriends that I wrote about my book that one of the girls, it was like one of the last one that I, I really learned the balance between pursuing too much and not pursuing enough. And that happened to me one time. We went away. I think we were like at Disney. We went, I took her to Disney for like the weekend. We were going to do like around the world. It was the same thing. We got back to the hotel and because she had rebuffed me at numerous times just because my sensory acuity wasn't developed yet and I kind of had the same kind of attitude that you did. And so we get back to the hotel room and she gets on top of me, starts making out with me. We start fooling around but the bottom line is it didn't, you know, the room service ended up coming and then we ended up passing out after we ended up eating but the point being is that I never escalated things physically further because I was waiting for her to do it. And, in, and it was kind of the same thing. And friends of mine that knew we were going out and even girlfriends there was like, well, like, well, did it happen? Like, no, nope, it didn't happen. It was because it was my fault that it didn't happen because I didn't push things to that level. And just because, like I said, a man, part of being a man is being fearless, meaning going for what you want and being willing to get rejected even if you don't because you look at it well it's just a matter of time before I get what I want so like I said I, I believe what you're doing wrong is that when you're getting rejected you're taking it like as a permanent rejection look for the the touching of your arm if you're standing real close or if you're sitting next together and her knee is touching yours or if you're walking down a street and her arm, her shoulder is bumping into your shoulder she's standing too close those kinds of things or like when you're looking at her and you look at her lips and you notice that she looks at your lips too. That means she's ready to be kissed. When a woman is close to you and like her knee is touching yours, that, that's the invitation when you should escalate physical contact. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to go to my website right now, click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a paid phone coaching session. I'll talk to you soon.